My name's Kelvin, I'm 20 years old, I'm a footballer and I'm a sponsored Under Armour athlete. And today I'm gonna to be going through my story in my life. Yeah. And then unfortunately I got stabbed in the leg twice in my left hamstring. So it's literally happened right there. Calvin has come into us um, and he's been great to work with. Thank God that nothing has happened like going because sometimes you come back home late. One of the hardest workers you ever see. Literally see. Like, that April was all that's when I signed for Under Armour. I feel like God has helped me in so many aspects where he's um, made me a better character. My life, my life. Pretty much start in Ireland. Um, I was born in the Republic of Ireland, grew up in Cork City, um, played for Carrigaline FC, Character FC, um, Cork City for a short amount of time, and then I moved to the UK when I was 11. Moved in with my grandparents, uh, lived in Walthamstow, obviously, family came over as well. And then I started playing for uh, Lane United. Um, my coach, Jerry, there. Very, very strict coach, but probably one of my favorite coaches. He probably brought like the best of me. And then um, that's when I caught start, you know, playing at academies. Um, I was training at Crystal Palace, didn't get in, but I was training at China Flick. Everything was going well. I was, it was an eight week trial. And then unfortunately, I got stabbed in the leg twice in my left hamstring. And obviously, my trial got caught short, type of thing. So um, it's a thing where I felt like. I could have, you know, made it into the youth team, but then obviously I got caught short, unfortunately. So obviously, I live in North London, live in Enfield. Um, to be honest, I actually like this area. Surprisingly, so many people here in North London, here in Enfield, they're like, how can you live in Enfield, man? It's, it's a weird place. But now, me, I like it still, because like, literally, if you look down there, if I'm going to cinema, my cinema is right there. Literally down the road there. That's my full pitch as well. I'm going to go to the shop. My is right there. Like, I, I, really, I really like how I'll be real. Like, and it's like, there's not many people, but there's a lot of people. I know like, most of my friends and family live here as well. So, like, end food is serious, man. It, it's going to have a place in my heart. It's going to have a place in my heart still. Initially, the, the, the place we're going as well, yeah? Yeah. Today's gonna to be the first time, the first time I, I went to the place. Since I was and I was have five years ago, bro. No, six years ago, bro. Okay. So obviously right now we're at the location where basically like, I like to say my kind of event, like an event that needs to happen for me to, you know, be good type of thing. So this is why I got stabbed twice in the leg. It's all start from here. I was literally with my friend, I remember it was March 15th, 2018. Literally after school, me and my friend came. We were just chilling here. And obviously there was a situation with my older brother where he had an argument with another girl and then that girl had a, sis, um, had a brother in my year. And then he was kind of like a gang member. So yeah, he heard everything and came for me instead. He saw me here and approached me and he said, hey, listen, come here. And then he showed me his knife. And I told my friend, go, go, go. Because obviously I don't want my, my, my friend to get like, in trouble or stab himself in it. So it was just me, him and another guy. And then they told me, let's walk down there to like a more quiet area. Because obviously he was always busy in it. So literally I, I kind of had no choice but to go down. Because obviously I was scared myself. I was what, 15, 14 at the time. So followed him and we start walking down there. So I'm going to take you guys through and where it happened type of thing. So 
So right now I'm telling myself, this is the first time I've been here in five years. It happened five years ago, it happened when I was 15, I'm now 20, and this is the first time I'm coming to that place where it all happened. So um, obviously, yeah, we're walking down, we're walking down, and then um, loads of stuff are going through my mind at the time, can't lie. It's a thing where he has a knife, am I gonna die, am I not, I don't know. So it's literally happening right there. So yeah, in that quiet place so he can do what he needs to do. And I literally got stabbed shit, twice there. If, if it's explicit, you're showing the bar, literally. Uh, yeah, right there, twice in the leg right there. And I mean, like, so, it was scary, I believe it was scary, but it's the thing where I was wearing football shorts when it happened, so it kind of felt like, like a pencil touched my leg. So, um, even funny, I had training on that day as well. And then I was thinking of going training as well. I wasn't thinking of going to the hospital. I wasn't thinking of snitching or whatever. I was thinking of going straight to training. And then um, I remember down by the library is where I went to get, to get myself cleaned up, to go straight to training. But then uh, and a, lab a librarian saw what happened to my leg and she was like, oh yeah, come, let me stitch you up. So then um, while she's stitching me up, she's like, all right, cool. Just give me a second, I need to get more bandages. So she went, she came back. 10 minutes later, I hear loads of sirens. I'm thinking, did you just call the police? She's like, oh, boys these days, stop each other. I was like, oh man. So obviously, now I know I need to go to the hospital to get stitches, so and so. I can't go to training, I'm upset. And then police get involved, mum comes. My mum was crying, can't I? But yeah, it was, it was a sad day, I'll be real. But um, it's funny to say, me getting stabbed, it didn't really hurt. The only thing that hurt was the stitches, innit? But um, it's a thing where also on that day as well, uh, the same guy that stabbed me, he messaged me on Snapchat as well. Bear man, I'm 15 as well. So he messaged me and he was like, oh, you're right, I'm sorry, I just realised what I had done. And then I was like, hey, listen, it's calm. Because obviously me, I'm a Christian, in my religion, we need to forgive people. So I was like, bro, don't worry, it's all good, man. Just make sure you don't do nothing stupid again. And obviously now and then I check on him to see if he's okay, if he's still doing the like, bad stuff. But obviously he kind of is, but I feel like when you're in that mix, it's kind of hard to get out of. But my question to all of you watching that might be involved in those stuff is, why do you guys do it? I, I don't understand, like you guys, think you have the power to take someone's life, but at the end of the day, you don't. And trust me, it's not too late to come out of it. Just seek God. If that's you being a Christian, in Islam, and whatever, just seek God and trust me, everything's gonna be okay. But as I said, this is where it all began, my kind of event. And from there, I, I kind of feel like everything's just skyrocketed, you know? Football, under armor, social media, I've been able to inspire so many people. And yeah, man, so let's get stuff going. I got big plans. So one main goal, obviously me being stabbed, a footballer being stabbed, is to, you know, decrease the risk of people getting stabbed in London because I feel like there's been so many people that have been innocently stabbed, so many unnecessary gang violence. So I wanna take part in trying to like put down the risk of people getting stabbed. And I'm, I'm gonna try to do like a big charity event coming soon where like I'm just promoting everyone just stop knife crime, stop the violence and everything. Another big goal of mine is um, obviously to make it pro, everyone knows that, but it's to definitely win the World Cup. Me, I'm born in Ireland from Ghana, so whatever country comes first, I'm gonna represent that country for the rest of my life, try to captain them and win the World Cup. And those are my two big goals for my life. So yeah, so as I said, five years ago, Kind of event happened, got stabbed. Five years later, or now basically all over London, the UK. Obviously, there's the boy to Shane as well. Shout out to Shane, man. I'm proud of you as well. Obviously, that's me. My my brand under Armour Carla. Everything that's happened so far, I loved it. I've loved it so far. And it's a thing where I've always said I would sign for a brand like Under Armour. I support Liverpool. My favorite player is Trent. When Under Armour came to me, I couldn't say no. And when they said your face is going to be all over London, I was like, ain't no way. So, listen, Trent, if you're watching this as well, I will see you soon. But, like, these are the results from hard work, innit? Like, when I got stabbed, I could have been, I could have been like, listen, I'm going to go to the streets, um, go get back the guy that done me wrong. But instead I said, nah, let me focus. Let me get close to the crash. Let me focus on ball, focus in the gym. And this is what happened now. Now, sign of Under Armour, now playing senior bro, 
Going to be playing pro soon, trust me on that one. And my face is all over London. And guys, that is what hard work gets you. So whatever you do, whatever happens, keep working hard because I promise you, one day the hard work, you will see all the results. Trust me, trust me, man. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria Wampong, Kelvin, Akwesi Wampong's mom. Um, Kevin is my son and um, as I said, his mom. Um, since he was born, he has been having passion in um, football. So way back in Nyland, he has been up and down about football. He has been trying all means like about football, so passionate about it. So as a mother, you always wish and pray for your son to succeed and go up high about his dreams and visions that what he wants to achieve in the future. Yeah. So by God's grace, it has been on and up and down, front and back, like, but there we are now since we moved to UK here. Um, he has been continuing his um, journey about the football and um, he's progressing one football to another team, one team to another, one training to another. Sometimes I'm scared for him going out. If I hear all this stabbing and shooting and all those stuff going around, I'm just scared for him to pursue the, the dream. I always tell him, Kevin, why don't you look for second option, second opinion about because I'm not comfortable with this. But Anyway, that's what he, this young man wants to do. So I just need to support him so that anything that he's doing, like he will get to where he wants to be in future. Under Armour too came in recently and he has been going up and down. He's kind of enjoying it. I thank God that nothing has happened like going, because sometimes he will come back home late, taking him to football trainings and matches and all those kind of stuff. Anyway, that's what he wants to do. So as a family, we are supporting him as best as we can for him to get to where he wants to be in future as well because anything that you are doing you have to have dreams and passion on what you are doing so yeah it we've been supporting the best that we could and life is going on so now there we are recently under our mind they put all his videos everywhere in the city they came to call us came call us to go and witness and it was fun to see his photos everywhere in the cities you know like he's doing something at his age, not joining bad group to bring something bad, to hear something has happened to your son. So we thank God for everything. So here we are now. So we thank God for everything and thank God for his life. And I'm still praying that he just turned 20 years. Uh, anything that he's dreaming to achieve in future, God should help him to succeed and come out with flying colors. And if we are mentioning big, big people in the country or anywhere in the world then he too will be one of them in future so yeah i thank god for his life and i thank god for everything and i hope the best for him in future as well so in terms of family my up my upbringing was it's it's very good i will like, say i have a, like a good support system i have an older sister older brother and two younger sisters so i'm the middle child obviously just with my mom and i'll say like they've really supported me in life especially like my brother you know, growing up, I'd, I'd play football with him and everything. He used to play football as well. And, like, obviously, he, he stopped now. But it's a thing where him stopping is, like, a blessing for me because the way he supports me is crazy. Like, the day I signed for Under Armour, he was there. Um, when I got back, because, obviously, I'm a Christian as well. I were a very, like, Christian family. When I was getting baptised, my brother was there as well. So, like, they really support me in everything I do, especially my mum. Like, when I was travelling out charting, obviously, I was um 15, like straight after school, I, like she'll pick me up, go straight to charting, train, go home. I, we come home around like 10 because we lived in East London at the time. So, so it's a thing where like they support me so much. And it's just like, I feel like a good support system is very much valuable in everything you do because like it just motivates you to do so much stuff. So I'm going to show you the family. So obviously this is like a nice family picture. Over there we've got myself, we've got my mom. My sister, younger sister Raquel, second younger sister Victoria, older sister, the, she's the oldest as well, perfect. And then my older brother there, Nana, he's like, what, two, only two years older than me. Everyone says we look the same, but I don't see it still. And then probably like my favorite picture, well, two favorite pictures, obviously, this is when I signed my contract with Under Armour, what, well, the first time, and obviously that's Nick down there as well. 
and then probably my second favorite picture as well uh one of the billboards i've been in with under armor that's down at shoreditch i believe so yeah when that um i went down for surprise with under armor they showed it took so many pictures it was a good day still even went down with my family as well and yeah that's another picture of, of, of my brother as well what a guy but yeah man so that's the family but let's get stuff cracking man so obviously me um as many of you guys might know obviously i'm a christian I've grown up in a Christian household, but I feel like so many people, when it comes to religion, um, they just follow what their parents do. So let's say if you've grown up in a Muslim household, in a Christian household, they just decide to become whatever their parents are. But obviously, um, I've grown up, obviously, as I said, in a Christian household, and I've always believed in God, but not really seeked him like that. I always went to church on a Sunday, so-and-so, but I wasn't really in tune with it, so-and-so. Like, I was still, like, disobeyed the bible and it wasn't only until like let's say probably when i got stabbed because obviously when i got stabbed they told me i was two centimeters from um, bleeding to death in um from the knife hitting a vein so when i heard that i was like you know god is death or real like I've, I've i've never said he wasn't real but i, I was like yep yeah, i know he's real but then it wasn't until like last year when i can say i properly gave my life to christ when um i tore my quad and um I I was I was I was basically I was in the dark. I couldn't play football for two months. No gym, no creating content because obviously I'm a content creator as well. No football. I'm I'm asking myself like, am I gonna make it? I've torn my quad. I can't walk. I can't run. I can't sprint. And me, who's very athletic, that's why I base my football off. So I was in a very dark place. Don't know what to do. Don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And I was like, you know what? Like, let me actually uh, see God properly because I really need His help. So I started reading my Bible, you know, I was getting close and I, and then I felt that sort of peace, even while I was injured, while everything was going bad, I felt that peace. So then during the, during the first one, I came out from injury, everything just went so well. You know, I was playing well, won my college league that season and I was captain as well. That April as well, that's when I signed for Under Armour. And then now um, I found a church called um, RPF down at Tottenham. And like, they're basically like my second family, like they helped me with so many stuff. And since then, I feel like God has helped me in so many aspects where he's um, made me a better character. And there's one Bible of us I go by, it's um, Romans 8, 18. And it says, the trials and tribulations you feel, it's nothing compared to the glory that is coming. So me getting injured and me getting stabbed, it was nothing compared to me standing for Under Armour, me getting a pro contract soon and everything. So just that, I really thank God in everything he does. And anyone watching this, any religion you are, if you're Christian, Islam, Hindu, whatever it is, trust me, you need to seek God because God God helps you. People go sleep and they they like if they don't if you don't dream, you don't know what's going on and you still wake up fine and everything. So just be thankful and thank of everything. And I feel like that ties into my, my my motivation as well because like the people around me, they're motivating to get closer to God. Me getting closer to God pushes me to now be disciplined in everything I do. And in terms of motivation as well, like my family, my family motivated me so much. Like my mom was always working hard. She just came from Ghana to Ireland to England and just like, I can't now throw away my mom's hard work and just slack as well. I need to work hard for her. And then another thing that motivates me as well is like um, the people that follow me on social media. The comments I get, the DMs I get, are oh, Kelvin, you've helped me so much. You motivate me so much, Kelvin. Like it's just it's just it's very motivating and it's gone to the point where on the street people see me and they're like, Can I get a picture? or they just ask for advice and it's just like so many people don't understand how much that motivates me because people are now looking up to me. So if they're looking up to me, I can't now slack and just give up. People are looking up to me to make it to, you know, put Enfield on the map, put Wolfenstone on the map. So stuff like that motivates me so much, man. One thing, one thing loads of young people like, like think, yeah, when you're like your uh, semi-pro football or professional football, or like let's say you're something in life is that like, uh, you should only work, you can't have fun, so and so. Me, that's it's completely opposite for me. Me, I'm a, like, uh, when I'm not playing football, when I'm not in the gym, when I'm not working, I'm literally at home on my PS5 
or literally with my sisters watching Marvel. Because me, I'm, I'm a big Marvel guy. Like, if I were to like, now talk about my personality, I'm a Marvel guy. When I'm at home, I'm watching Marvel. I'm watching my TV shows and everything to keep me like, just just have fun in it. Because it's not every day being serious, you know. Yeah, it's, it's not every day being serious, you know, uh, training. Like, obviously, I train, train most days, in it, But, like, you need to have fun, like, something to keep you going and having fun. Like, right now, we're at home, playing some Fortnite. OG map is back. You know, I'm an OG myself. Yeah, me, I'm an OG myself. Just got a kill right, right, right there. But yeah, so like, to the young people watching now, like, just don't f don't always think about football, 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 or like your sport type of thing. Have some fun as well, if that makes sense. Like after a long day of training, you can come home, you know, hop on Fortnite, hop on FIFA, have some fun if that makes sense. Because I feel like that it affects so many people's mental health where they're just training, they're just training, they're just training, and then they burn out. And then because they train so much, they're tired or like mentally they're just thinking too much about football or their sport. So what I always say to like my young cousins or like young people that ask me for advice is, uh, is like, just have fun as well. And like when you're playing football, obviously take it serious, but sometimes take it as like you're having fun. Because I've realised that when I'm playing football, I play my best football when I'm enjoying my football, like when I'm having fun. Not when I'm taking it too serious because then like, I'm overthinking it, I'm getting angry too quickly. So if that's, damn. If that's one advice I'll, I'll, I'll give to the younger generation out there, it, honestly, honestly, have some fun. I just died, but yeah, guys, have some fun, honestly, man. Yeah, man. I'm one of KB's closest friends. Um, you see your <laughs> name, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm one of KB's closest friends. My name's Jesse. My name's Stelly. I'm, I'm KB's dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw him grow up from a little no, kid. No, be honest. Ah, bro. Oh, <laughs> Jesse. Oh yeah, wake up. And yeah, how we met KB? Um, I think oh. it was school. I think it was in school. I remember I was in the yeah. lunch hall, and they were saying. Oh yeah, some guy from West starts coming to the school, coming to the school. And yeah, he must have walked in. This is yeah. when he, he didn't have hair. Ooh. Skinhead, skinhead. skinhead. <laughs> and he just walked in and literally from the beginning, because obviously back in school days, we had two different like group dynamics mm -hmm. in it. But from the minute this guy walked in, we already knew that he was gonna be in our group, innit? Yeah. But yeah, literally just going to school with him every day, linking up, just being together, we just kind of clicked from the beginning, innit? Yeah, I remember the first time. We had we played football. He rainbow flipped me still. <laughs> you might, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Now, fun fact: me and KB, you know, the first time we, met, we always got into a scrap, you know. We yeah. Like yeah, because like, there was one time me and KB fell out still. But, but yeah, yeah my team still. <laughs> <laughs> but but less on that, innit? But yeah, KB literally such a hard worker. I feel like me seeing him grow from the beginning, just seeing how he's taking steps. Yeah, and one of the hardest workers you ever see. Literally, like, hundreds. started off what it was. It was with the whole TikTok. Yeah, and he was thinking. We started seeing what it was. It was five k, ten k, one k, two k, three k. Next, you know, it's going up and then hundred k. It, it was surprising still, but obviously we've always been proud of him. Started off, then he did the whole um, what's it, the gym, gym, gym trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then after that, he saw the Under Armour um, thing, um, um, and then he took it seriously, worked hard, and then got sponsored. Uh, yeah. Just seeing how far he's come, just he inspires other people just to do better. Literally, 100%. Like, he's one of my inspirations. Yeah, and he has a very good story as well. Like the fact he got stabbed and he recovered from that, and then he went on to do big things. That's a good thing. Nah, for real. Right. But... You're not talking about gaming. Oh, right. describe his game. Oh, I kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't let. Can you even put that in the documentary? 
<laughs> but yeah, literally, nah, he just sounds fun to be around. Like, obviously, yeah, but gaming. let's do, let's go back to gaming though. Can I? <laughs> bad, yeah, by the game, or shit at FIFA, then at Fortnite, 2K can't even talk about it. Like, <laughs> he always talks, but he really, truly, he's dead. But yeah, he's just someone you just have to have in the party, isn't it? Yeah. To yeah, yeah. my brother, we can't treat our family members. As we go, as we go along life's way, when it comes to who's in our family tree, we just don't have have any say. But if the time ever came along and we were supposed to do, when I was picking out a brother, there's no doubt that I wouldn't choose you. Oh. Oh. Stop you, sis. Stop you, sis. Stop you, Stop you, sis. I'm Kareek. And I'm Victor KB. And yeah, man, we're both Kelvin's friends from secondary school. Known him since like White Star. And yeah, man, kind of Kelvin. What a guy, man. What a guy, still. He said, He's a good guy, man. Good heart. Hard working, man. There's nothing. Like, a lot of people, they get this stuff like what Kelvin has. Just from just being in the mix, but Kelvin, he worked hard for what he's got, man. I can't lie. Nah, for real, still. And obviously, like, growing up with him was like, obviously, I grew up, I um, started knowing Kelvin like mid, like, mid secondary school. So I know him from football days, mm. white stuff. And then obviously, he came to our school, Lee Valley. And um, yeah, man, he just clicked with Amanda, man. He's very, like, you know what I'm saying? He's very genuine. And it's that all of my group, everyone around me are genuine, innit? So that's how we easily clicked on with Kelvin and that. And yeah, man, Kelvin has a good heart. He's so hard working as well. That like, person was doing this athlete thing. And then, yeah, man, came to end and stopped playing football. And he started going harder and harder and harder. And he was one of them guys that you have all the materials, like, had them steps. The what do you call it? The cones. All of that. But all of the men do not have that. So, like, bro, this guy, like, this guy's just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But different, little did we know, was very advanced. Like right now, God bless him right now. He signed with Under Armour, free, all of that. Mm. That hard work and that. Me and my bro came to crash together basically as well. And yeah, literally, I'm seeing like, obviously he got baptized as well. Like, obviously I, I was saying last week, but you don't understand it. But yeah, man, he got baptized. And that made me like happy still. Like he's a new man, he's born again. And he's literally like, he's following the word that like, he's trying. And I like that for him, so I love that for him still. Bro. Especially that area we grew up in it was hard. Obviously, we got stabbed and now what, no, what, not. A couple of people will try like, give up after that. Yeah, man, or try like Sounds get my man back yeah. or something. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't. He brushed that, and he knew that God always had a plan for him. And obviously, that was part of the plan. Obviously, it wasn't positive, innit? Yeah. Obviously, he got stabbed and that, but yeah, so he kept it moving, man. Yeah, man. That's the definition of everything happens for a reason. But look at look at him now, you know. So um, yeah, man. So obviously training on the pitch, very intense, obviously with so many people my level as well, you know, semi-pro playing men's football, high intensity, so we start with like, like technical work, been getting to possession, been getting to like, a, like an intensive game. And trust me, when you're playing the games, it gets intense, like, so, now like, it's very good, obviously, so, like, I'm not only doing team training, I need to do work off the pitch as well, so, this is why I do my work off the pitch. You're not playing in your team anymore, you're playing with everyone, okay? So, body shape, head on a swivel, for God's sake, please be aware of what's around you. Yeah. Hey, come on, man, come on, come on. You've got two minutes, get on with it. Okay, so FSCR, we're a elite football performance and rehab centre here in Battersea, South London. Tonight, looking at one of our technical sessions for our boys that are a combination of semi-pro and youth players in and around academies, um, both professional and private. 
essentially what it is 60 minute session tonight and tonight the focus has been on um, unit work in small units twos threes and ultimately sixes so looking at players that can, can play individually and collectively in small groups um, it's been good it's been lively and this is the combination of it now 6v6 with what was nearly a nice finish to it nearly finished um, yeah it's been really good really really positive some good learning outcomes with the boys trying to teach that it's not just about them and the ball and being able to play in twos and threes really really key and often a differentiating factor between higher and lower levels so really good really happy so my name is Enrico, I'm a junior at SNC here at FSCR, um, football, strength, conditioning and rehabilitation. We are an elite performance center um, catering exclusively to footballs, offering pitch sessions, strength and conditioning programs as well as technical football sessions so we're bringing elite professional game level service to everyone from um, amateurs to youth players to semi-pros all the way to full professionals so yeah, and so over the past couple of months uh, Calvin has come into us um, and he's been great to work with he's firstly probably the only person I've seen get jump like 65 plus maybe 70 centimeters um, and a counter movement jump, so that's pretty impressive in and of itself, but definitely speaks to his worth e worth work ethic. Um, he's consistent, he comes in here, he works hard, um, gets his head down, um, does the hard bits, and he does them well. So, yeah, it's, uh, he's a great person to work with, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So what were you guys working on today? How did he help? Um, so today, Kelvin was working on a few different bits. So he was doing some lower body S and C. So we kind of started with some technical sprinting aspects, then went into some um, resisted kind of A switching, working on his um, reactive strength. Um, and then we did some resisted jumping. So trying to see if he can jump even higher, <laughs> which is uh, not an easy task. Um, and then we kind of went into a bit of strength work. So after the testing that we've done, we've kind of identified that it's mostly like his posterior chain. So kind of hamstrings, glutes, that's where his weaknesses lie. So that's what we've kind of um, targeted to address. So we did some single leg hip thrust isometrics and then some, um, some razor overhead pulses. Um, and then after that, just kind of paired that with some accessory work. So some pistol squats, uh, some seated leg calf raises, um, yeah. Um, just keep doing what you're doing, like the consistent, the doing the small things consistently well lead to uh, big changes and big successes. So just say keep doing that definitely and never be satisfied and never settle. Always keep aiming for that 1%. Done. Done. When you come to this gym and you bring sweets, you need to pay tax to the staff. So, down at Battersea, down at FECR, just done training. Obviously, um, due to my on my sponsorship, um, I get trained there with um, SEC coaches from Reading and QPR, features as well. The equipment here is top class. Really enjoying it, man. But obviously, this is where hard work gets you. So, guys, make sure you work hard, man. Yeah. Yes, guys, and that's a wrap of my life. This is the story of my life. So many people just see the results and they don't see the works behind the scenes. As you can see, grinding every day, praying every day, you know, staying in tune with my religion, staying in tune with my family, having family time, having fun time as well. And or, as I said before, in terms of the knife coming and everything, a question to every person that holds a knife why do you think you have the right to take someone's life? If I was to give, my advice, um, give myself advice in the next couple years, just keep going, keep working hard. The hard work has got you where you are right now. You're a son of Under Armour, you're a child of Pro Clubs. Keep going, and guys, make sure you keep working hard. Peace. <laughs>